welcome back friends um, today video is going to talk about what is shallow copy what is deep copy this is one of the core java interview questions these are frequently asking question all the interviews what is shallow copy what is deep copy we'll go to see now uh, there is a difference between shallow copy and deep copy i will i, I will explain this thing later we'll going to see the example now what is the shallow copy example okay hmm? Uh, see here, here we have a one, one class called EMP class. EMP class. In the EMP class, having a two attribute called int a, int b. Let me remove this print method also. I don't want to use now. Uh, in the constructor, I'm assigning value under two a value, two under two b value. Is a very very simple classes. Using this classes, I'll going to show what is a shallow copy. In this main method, I'll going to in initialize a new EMP object. Then object one dot a equal to I'll want to print that obj one dot a. What is the obj one dot a? I want to print that one dot a. Okay. Then I want to initialize another object for EMP. So I want to create another object for EMP. Then I want to copy object one to object two. Meaning of this, we are copying. We are copying the object one reference to reference to object two. Uh, uh, object two. Okay. This is the meaning of when you do this. Um, whatever um, references. Uh, available in the object one that reference copying into object two okay we have just copying the references now i want to print this value okay this is from object to object two object to object two So now object one dot a hundred, object one dot b two hundred, object two dot a hundred, object two dot b two hundred. Correct? So because we are copying the object one reference to object two, whatever value uh, having inside object one, that value will be available object two because object two is holding reference of object one. Okay. Now another one if I want to try out here, print and then what is the hash code value? Hash code. My expectation is both object one, object two must have same hash code. So here, the both object having a same hash code. That meaning, the both object having a same reference, and same memory address. Now I want to do another uh, manipulation object 2 dot a equal to 1000 so here i am changing object to a equal to 1000 um, actually what is the actual value of ob a uh, attribute a it's a thousand uh, hundred right here i am changing object 2 dot a i am changing a value using object 2 object 2 dot a i am saying 1000 that meaning our expectation is object 1 dot a must have a 1000 object 1 dot should have a 100 this this could be a expectation for everybody or some people let's see what is the output after changing i want to print object 2 dot a object 2 dot b object uh, I, I want to print this one sorry I want to print object one dot a object one dot b as well as object two dot a object two dot b after modification okay hmm. see 
so after charges object 1.8000 is printing the reason is <coughs> object 1 and object 2 is having a same reference same address when we print the hash code of object 1 and object 2 it's giving the same hash code so this is the same hash code right for example let's say this is the reference so this is the hash code value right this is the hash code value this hash code value uh, pointing to two different objects which is the object one and the object two object one and the object two obj1 and then obj2 so here both are referring same reference so here we have a value right let's say here we have a value a equal to 100 default value b equal to 200 200 so initially we are constructed with a equal to 100 b equal to 200 whenever we change this value automatically reflect that in object 1 and object 2 because we are using shallow copy shallow copy meaning object 1 equal to object 2 if we assign one object to another object that is called as a shallow copy that meaning you are copying only reference of particular objects particular object whenever you change any value for that particular particular object uh, that value reflected in all other objects also okay that is called as a shallow copy now i'm going to change here object one dot b equal to 2000 so whenever we change object one dot b equal to 2000 this 2000 value is reflected in object two dot b as well so here its output say object b is 200 object b object one is a 200 right? let me run this program So now object 2.a 1000, object 2.b 2000, object 1.a 1000, object 1.b 2000. But I am changing here object 1.b equal 2000 that is reflected in object uh, 2.a as well. So this, is, this concept is called as a shallow copy. Shallow copy, copy the only reference. Copy the only reference. Whenever you change the reference value, that value get reflected in all the object. This is called as a shallow copy. Okay. Now we're going to see example of deep copy. I'll going to comment out this. Now, deep copy. EMP object to equal to new EMP. This is called as a deep copy. Deep copy is very simple. Whenever you initialize separately using new keyword, new keyword is the same object. Here is a EMP is a class using for this class I am initializing a two different object object and object to using new key, new keyword. Okay. Now this will have its own reference. This will have its own reference. This will have its own reference. Okay. Whenever you change the value of object on object two object and value specific to object one object two value specific to object two. that's it that value will not be visible in the other object because this is a uh, deep copy okay hmm? print ln obj1 obj1 dot a obj 1 dot b okay now i'll going to change obj 1 dot value here obj 1 dot a equal to 
3000 i am giving here 3000 then i i want to print obj 1.a as well as obj 2. .a. let's see what is the value here see here object 1 dot a 200 object 1 dot b 200 right then object 1 dot a i change it to 3000 again here printing object 1 dot a it's a 3000 then object 1 dot object 2 dot a still it's a 100 because not changed because both the object will have a different reference okay whenever you change the attribute of attribute particular object that value bounded within that object okay it, it's not visible this is called as a deep copy i hope that uh, uh, you people understand what is a shallow copy concept what is a deep copy deep copy concept um you must understand the shallow copy concept completely but you know what is deep copy deep copy meaning uh, each object will have a own references whenever you change any object value that object value uh, not reflected in other object right that is this concept is called as a deep copy but here we are not implemented deep copy just to you know what is a deep copy the next video session i will explain how to implement deep copy using clone method okay the clone method default behavior is a shallow copy whenever you copy one object to another object clone method invoked and it will do a uh, shallow copy process okay shallow copy process that meaning one object uh, multiple object will have a same references i want to perform a copy operation using deep copy mechanism for that we need to override clone method for that we need to override a clone method okay by you implement by overriding clone method we can achieve deep copy okay in this presentation i explained here see changes reflected in all copies changes are not reflected in, in other objects by default clone supports shallow copy whenever you copy one object to another object by default clone method support shallow copy if you want to implement deep copy we need to override we need to override clone method respective classes and the shallow copy is less expensive shallow copy is a less less expensive why is less less expensive it uses only one reference for multiple object that is called as a it's a less expensive deep copy is a high expensive high expensive because uh, each object will have a own reference that's the reason it's a high expensive it is a very fast shallow copy is a very fast because there is no memory for multiple object because it is pointing a only one reference but deep copy not not like that each object will have a its own memory location own memory okay that's the reason it is a uh, slow when compared to shallow copy okay in the next video i will going to explain i will going to show how to implement deep copy using a clone method i hope you understand what is the difference between shallow copy and deep copy still we have to see the deep copy implementation in the next video definitely i will going to show how to implement deep copy if you like this video please share it to your friend circle i am planning to um, upload uh, many um, core java interview questions as well as uh, hibernate jpa and spring boot microservices please follow follow my channel for more updates please share this channel to your friend circle until then bye bye from suresh thanks for watching this full video if you like this video please share it to your friend circle click bell icon for regular updates still you are not subscribed this channel please subscribe it thanks again